how's everybody doing today? This is Rich here. We have a Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It is Tony Sklar, the Senior Vice President of Ideanomics. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. How are you today? Very good. Now, you're the Senior VP of Investor Relations, correct? Senior Vice President of Investor Relations. Very good. Very a good. Not a small task over here at Ideanomics, as you can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. I know that it's obviously when you're working with a company of this level in the electric vehicle space, there's going to be a lot of different things that are going to happen. And this is one of the hottest sectors in the world. And you guys have had a lot of success and there's been a lot of ups and downs in the stock. So we wanted to do a video today and kind of just figure out where everybody's at, where you guys are and try to identify if this is the time for people to really start positioning themselves in the company. So I have a couple questions for you. Let's go through Question it. away. Now, Ideanomics is a global company that assists and facilitates companies with the adoption of commercial electric vehicles for a greener global economy and is a provider of financial services and fintech products. Can you give us a brief rundown about the global electric vehicle industry and the potential for Ideanomics? Sure. Fantastic. Listen, thank you very much. And um, as your viewers and you have sort of um, reiterated, the electric vehicle market is getting a lot of attention globally. Um, you know, is it because of this recent pandemic that EV is now getting some further traction because ESG goals are, are a little bit more of a forefront? Is it because a lot of folks have looked out their window and thought, wow, the sky is really blue and I can see the mountains miles and miles and miles and miles away where maybe that wasn't necessarily attainable before. In, in, um, in China, where we have a lot of our revenues and where our, our business really has accelerated, there are you know, some major cities that have a, quite a bit of pollution or have had quite a bit of a pollution. And that really was the driving catalyst towards you know, moving to these more greener policies, these blue sky policies, if you will, and putting stimulus and mandates and timelines into place to be able to move to more of an electrificated system. This is where the world inevitably is latching onto. But it's really tough to get there if there is an abundance of product on the market and if there isn't a direction. And if you don't have a roadmap, it's going to be really difficult to drive there. And so that's really where ideonomics comes into play. We're not on the consumer side. We don't sell Teslas to the, the individual, if you will. But Tesla would be a downstream partner to us if municipalities want a particular package of vehicles that would include some of that. And that has happened before to us. Tesla is a fantastic downstream partner. They have treated us with wonderful respect. And we wow. are very excited to be able to continue to push orders towards them and others as well. So, you know, I think that a lot of your viewers probably have seen a lot of narrative in the um, in the in the media regarding electric vehicles but for the most part it's really been on the passenger side it's really been sort of in the consumer market different car companies coming to market with different EV and that's fantastic that really gets the knowledge into into the ecosystem but at ideonomics we're a commercial EV enabler so if you are a if you are a last mile uh, provider of goods and services and you need to you know, switch your 10,000 last mile vehicles into an electrificated system, how do you do that? It's not just going over to Tesla and buying a particular car and then going in and plugging it in at home. You have to have fleet management tools. And for the most part, that's where Ideonomics has their sales to financing to charging model. You need to get the best vehicle at the best price for the specs that you need for your business. You need to make sure that you have adequate financing in place to be able to purchase a large fleet capacity vehicles. And then you need to be able to charge it. And how do you do all of that? It can be quite confusing for companies to be able to just jump in to this electrificated system. And that's why Ideonomics has seen success globally. Very good. Now, what differentiates Ideonomics from electric vehicle companies like Tesla and Workhorse. Sure. So Tesla, again, a great downstream partner, as is Volkswagen or Hyundai or Neo, And that's just on the passenger side. So just to take a, a quick step back, there are four categories that Ideonomics really focuses in on. 
you know, light vehicles like the passenger vehicle for taxis or uh, municipal uh, fleet purchasing for various different capacities within a municipality or, or government entity. Light trucks, so those last mile vehicles, the, 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 the Amazon deliveries, the Alibaba deliveries, if you will, that are happening around the globe, those types of last mile vehicles, whether it's your vegetable trucks, ice trucks, food trucks, something that falls into that category. And then we have more of our heavier trucks, which we've seen to the likes of, of other folks in the market who are trying to get into sort of that larger long haul vehicle um, uh, truck. And so we, we've got great partners um, in China and the rest of the world that help us bring that to market. And then buses. We've seen some of the other folks in the ecosystem as well play in that bus arena, but tour buses are a really big number for us. Just to use some examples, in China, there are over 800,000 tour buses that need to be electrified, have to have an electrification process um, put into place by a particular timeline. And sometimes that's, that's moved a little bit. It was 20. 2022, now it's 2023, um, 2025. But it doesn't matter if you put a pin necessarily in a, in a time frame. The, it's a movement. Folks, um, businesses are migrating towards the EV because it's the right thing to do. And that's what's going to move the needle around the globe to more of a sustainable green blue sky initiatives. So, so to answer your question, we have four particular categories that we really fall into. And of that, there are different manufacturers. China has the leading economy in electrification and electric vehicle manufacturers. There's over 400 participants. And we don't see that in a lot of other countries. You know, they're very fragmented. Here in the United States, some of the hottest um, companies on the stock market have been in EV, but a lot of them are from China because they've really got a, a 10 year plus head start on the, on the process, on the manufacturing capabilities, and more importantly, the technology. So as that filters throughout the rest of the world and, and other um, uh, car manufacturers start to really um, you know, permeate into the ecosystem, we're gonna see various different other manufacturers come to, come to market. And so we're really excited to offer our services globally to um, commercial um, operators, but more importantly, as we get here into the United States, so IDNomics has recently accelerated its uh, its plans to to permeate here in the uh, in the North American markets, and we're doing that through our own brand through Medici. And I know that's going to be a question later on in the interview, so we'll we'll save that for for that time. But I, I just am bringing about the idea that IDNomics we're, we're not a manufacturer. Those are downstream partners to us. We are a commercial electric vehicle enablement platform. Now that actually brings me to my next question. So Ideanomics recently announced a new division, Medici Motorworks. Can you tell us a bit about the new division and what it means for the company? Sure, absolutely. So as we were continuing to grow our business and expand um, in the Asian region, we'll get to sort of um, our 51% ownership of Tree Electric in, in Malaysia, the, the commercial EV manufacturer there, and what we're doing, bringing different partners from the globe, from definitely China and other different areas to, um, to facilitate the KD manufacturing that uh, we have a particular piece of land, 250 acres that's on our balance sheet, that uh, uh, that process, um, we have now expanded into the U.S. We were we were uh, noticing that there are other entrants into the markets, the Nikolas of the world, if you will, um, the Proterras. Um, and as the North American market started to heat up, we accelerated our plans. So we we founded our brand Medici, and we will we will choose different partners within the ecosystem in China and other areas in the world. And when we bring them into the United States, we will label them with the Medici brand. And that will be our branding mechanism here in North America. And if you think about it, you know, from a commercial, um, uh, from a commercial standpoint, a lot, of, a lot of folks don't necessarily see the brand of the vehicle in a commercial setting. They don't notice what the what the moniker on the front of a of a last mile vehicle is. They know that it says Baskin Robbins on the side, or it says Walmart on the side, or it says Costco on the side. But they're not necessarily looking at what the brand of the actual truck is itself. And that's a really important point because commercial operators want to get the best vehicle at the best price with the best financing rate and have the ability to charge it. And that's where Ideonomics comes into play. Being able to choose the manufacturer that provides here's the right type of vehicle for the customer that's the most important thing 
Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Now, Ideonomics has quite an impressive management team. Who are your key people and what value do they bring to the company? Sure. Well, right out of the gate, I think that a lot of folks will recognize Dr. Bruno Wu, who is our chairman and really quite the visionary. Just to, again, to take a little bit of a step back, Ideonomics has been through a few different iterations as a business in the last 10 years. Um, and of course, on our board is Mr. Shane McMahon. He's another uh, very high profile individual here in, uh, in North America. And, you know, a few years back, when the business was in an iteration of a media business run by the, uh, Shane McMahon, they brought Bruno Wu in uh, to be able to continue to sell and distribute uh, content, media content within Southeast Asia. But it had that market had been accelerated by other um, industry participants. And it really seemed like at the time, our company wasn't going to be able to really get the traction that it needed. And Dr. Bruno Wu noticed that. And he was able to speak with a lot of the other board members and communicate to shareholders that this wasn't going to be a fruitious business model, but being in fintech assets would have, um, will accelerate the growth for shareholders a lot faster. And we did that. And we took on different, we shed particular media assets and we brought on some fintech assets. And that's how we got in to the electric vehicle market. We were bidding on a contract in the city of Tianjin for a, a, an ABS package, a, um, an asset backed security package of buses. And we were taking um, a particular uh, technology, fintech technology based on some blockchain. And I use those air quotes a little loosely, not, not loosely, but it could have been any um, secure database at the time or distributed ledger. But blockchain was a great word. And we ended up winning that contract, be able to take certain KPIs from the um, from the assets, in this case, which were buses, in which case they were electric buses, and taking particular KPIs and attaching them into um, a secure database database to attach to a bond indenture so that, that that asset would be able to be located wherever the bond was trading, much like what didn't happen during the California housing crisis. Where are the houses? Can you imagine if they could have pinpointed which bond had which portfolio, which portfolio had which bond, which carried which mortgage? So we won this contract and it opened up the world of electric vehicles for us. And we were asked to do more and more and more. And Dr. Bruno Wu, the visionary realized that the sales to financing to charging model was what the industry needed to be able to enable commercial EV adoption. And that's very important. What we've seen right now in the market is a tremendous amount of EV activity or new energy vehicle activity, but mostly in the passenger area. The commercial aspect of a, this adoption is what is going to move the needle. But it's not that easy. You're not just buying one single vehicle and walking into home and plugging it in. You need to have an ecosystem. You need to get the right vehicle with the right financing at the and be able to charge that in an ecosystem where you are at least prepaying or getting energy at a regular basis. And that's where Ideonomics makes money. We take a slice along the value chain at each one of those inflection points. So back to your original question, which was management, Dr. Bruno Wu, who is quite the visionary here and leader in our company, an American citizen who travels back and forth between China and America, various different places in the rest of the globe. He and his wife are quite high profile um, individuals globally. So that allows us to, in lack of a better term, Bruno is able to kick in a lot of doors and get a lot of meetings with the right folks to be able to make these model known globally. And that's what's driven our business. So board of directors that is quite diverse and has some great management experience. Now, Alfred Poor, our CEO, one of the best CEOs that I've ever worked for, has great experience within automotive, was with Ford Credit for quite a long time. Um, and that continues to move to our CFO, Connor McCarthy, understands US gap accounting globally. So being able to take different divisions from around the globe and making sure that our accounting structures are into place for US gap rules and be able to consolidate that on a, on a, on a quarter by quarter basis. So he and his team are doing a fantastic job. And then, of course, we've got others like Keith Byers, our, our SVP of operations, who's got years of experience, not just in homologation,
Foundation, which is being able to bring vehicles for roadworthiness throughout the globe. We've got Kate Lamb, who is a, um, a seasoned veteran in the, in the financial space, being able to understand asset-backed security packages and how to actually get the F in the S to F to C model um, to make sure that that is being, that is flowing for customers because you got to remember, where are you going to get your financing from if you want to buy 2,500 electric garbage trucks at $500,000 a truck? I think there were a recent peer group of ours that announced something similar to that. If you're not going to, if your company isn't willing to write a check for a billion plus dollars, well, then you're going to need some financing. And that is part of our business model. So being able to have the domain expertise in-house, various different management throughout the globe, that's again, what makes IDNomics such a great company. That's great. Now you touched a little bit on it and revenue is key. Sure. We noted IDNomics reported revenues of 4.7 million in Q2. Yeah. Do the market expect the same or better revenues in Q3 and Q4? Please explain. Great. That's a great question. Obviously something that's been asked of, uh, of us a lot. I have so much to say about that. One, obviously the global pandemic has slowed down um, economics across the globe. So what we would have help, hoped to have been our Q1 was our Q2, and we can see that being pushed just a little bit. But no matter what, we are seeing quarter over quarter growth for Great. commercial EV. And that is a key point. And there aren't a lot of other companies in our peer group that have seen that type of commercial EV um, um, uh, adoption and inevitably being able to book that particular revenue. So I think that that's really important for your viewers to understand. We're not a NEO, we're not a Tesla. Both of those are downstream partners to us. And it, to use that, ex, you know, that as an analogy, last year when we were able to fulfill a, an order for a ride hailing service in, uh, in China, we were able to take, you know, 5,000 vehicles from Geely. And you can see that in the Bloomberg data. So, you know, if it is passenger vehicles, then we've got a Neo or a Tesla or, or a Geely as a downstream partner. As we go up in the four areas where we concentrate in, there are going to be some of the same partners and there'll be some different partners. But that is a de-risking factor for being able to participate in the investment as it is ideonomics because we're not married to one type of vehicle. We're not married to one manufacturer. And in this industry, technology shifts rapidly. It's a new industry, just like, like the cell phone industry 20 plus years ago when, when um, you know, Motorola was a, was a king, when Nokia was a king, where are they today? They still have a particular market share, but the point is the technology changes and we have de-risked um, for our investors by being able to choose the right partner with the right financial terms, with the right charging partner. Very good. Now, our investors pay a lot of attention to companies' capital structure, like shares outstanding, shares in the float, and how many shares are held by insiders. Could you please give us a capital structure breakdown? Sure. So there are approximately 237 million shares issued and outstanding for Ideonomics, give or take. Um, and from that, Dr. Bruno Wu holds the majority of those shares. It's somewhere within 35 to 45 million. He's got some preferred shares that have a, some, some super voting rights, but they, they convert into commons. They actually come down in the number that they are. So then it moves into Shane McMahon, the second largest shareholder um, who holds about eight plus million shares. And these numbers are readily available in our filing. So if investors want to be able to get those actual particular down to the, the last share, they can definitely look that up in our, in our recent proxy statement too. So we are actually headed into an AG and we have been speaking lots about different um, proposals that uh, shareholders need to vote on. So um, in this past quarter, the, the, the Q2, we were in some of Q3, we were able to clear off quite a bit of debt. So our balance sheet is looking tremendously healthy. And going forward, we're very excited, as is uh, a lot of our peer groups. They've raised capital at higher prices to be able to continue to not only fund their operations, which we have 
lots of runway for, but more importantly, it's being able to grow um, inorganically by accretive acquisition. And that's a really salient point. There's always gonna be little bolt-on M&A um, that we're gonna look at doing so that we can grow within an ecosystem that's rapidly changing. We wanna give our shareholders the best value and the best chance to be able to, to have a solid investment for many, many years to come. And to do that, you need to grow. You need to grow by sales and organically. And then you need to be able to do a little bit of that inorganically by M&A and accretive acquisition. So we've made sure that we've got a very healthy balance sheet, that we've got very, very little debt, and we're prepared when the market opportunity has arise to be able to take that in-house and, um, and make value for shareholders at a faster rate. I like it. Now, Ideanomics has a very uh, active and liquid market with an average of 5 million shares trading daily. Can investors expect the liquidity to be maintained or increased in the coming months? Well, you know, I often am always looking for a crystal ball to, to, to peer into and um, liquidity is key in any market. It allows um, um, an, a, a institutions and other investors to be able to get in and out of an investment with a lot, not a lot of price differential. It's very attractive to institutions and brokerage houses and family offices. So Ideonomics, you know, again, um, you know, the past few years, the entrance into the EV market, some um, some lumpy revenue, if you will, and some um, some hurdles and challenges that we had to be able to push through has shown investors, you know, it's had some um, volatility in the actual stock price itself, but the liquidity here is really the key. It's an important factor. And so as we continue to go forward and increase quarter over quarter revenues, we are looking to bring on not only more analyst coverage, but more institutions and more ESG funds and more family offices that are looking for the right investment that is going to grow over time that isn't just a passenger um, EV play, if you will, more commercially driven, which means that around the globe as more policy, regulation and funds become available for commercial adoption, Ideonomics has a longer runway. What should investors look out for from Ideonomics in the coming months? Ah, excellent. Fantastic. So Q4 is our time to shine. 2020 has been a challenging year at best. Um, you know, having operations around the globe, we have felt different um, different pressure points from this pandemic at different times. Our operations in, uh, in China obviously got hit at the very beginning when North America was still trying to understand what the outcome was going to be for this particular pandemic. Then, of course, it hit here in, in North America. So we've seen, you know, and, and I'm going to add one more layer in there, our Trilectric subsidiary as well in Malaysia, you know, had seen some contraction. So that had pushed things into the, the future quarters. But fourth quarter for us, we're very excited about because we've had this quarter over quarter growth. So no matter what, we're showing our investors that we are capturing revenue in the commercial EV market and growing it at an expansive rate quarter over quarter. So what is fourth quarter going to bring for us? We're very excited on further revenue growth. We're very excited to be able to announce possibly a couple of acquisitions. We'll see if we can make sure that that, that can happen in this quarter. And then more importantly, I think we're setting ourselves up for a fantastic 2021. So um, we are going to be able to come to market with product that is exciting, that is uh, some niche play and some growth here in North America, which we think is outpacing our particular peer group. And why do I say that? Because in the commercial EV adoption space, we have been able to capture revenue, um, again, at that quarter over quarter growth versus some of our peers who are still looking for that. Now, there's a lot of investors that are going to be learning about Ideonomics all over the world because of this interview. How can investors get in touch with you, Tony? Well, right out of the gate, please come to our website, idnomics.com. We have a wonderful, wonderful website 
with great information, whether it's in Meg, whether it's in Tree Electric, whether it's in Medici, whether you want to be able to look at our board of directors or each one of the resumes of our of our management. You can reach out to me at the IR at idnomics.com and don't hesitate to call um, our IR line as well. That number is on our website. So various different places in our social media that you can reach out as well, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or whether it's WeChat or whether it is uh, uh, Twitter. We have numerous amounts of ways that we interact with our um, investor base on a regular basis. And, you know, it's been very exciting for Ideonomics here within the last six months. You know, we've seen, again, some volatility in our stock price, but more importantly, we've gained a tremendous amount of new shareholders. And we want to make sure that responsibility is on us. So, you know, I know that there's been some negative information in the market as that is what happens in a, in a free market um, enterprise. You have to be able to battle some negative and some positive. But if you want the real goods, you come to Ideonomics. You get the information from us and we will walk you through whatever questions that it is, or if there is misinformation that you're seeing in the market, don't hesitate to reach out. We will get you on the phone with myself, with Alfred Poor, with Connor McCarthy, with Kate Lamb, Dr. Bruno Wu, if it's necessary, we will make sure that you are getting that proper information because we are just at the beginning of what is going to be an electric vacation revolution that is going to change the way the world sees its pollution levels. I love it. I love uh, everything I'm hearing. Thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. We're very excited about Ideanomics and the electric vehicle space, kind of like a picks and shovels play for electric vehicles. Um, we talk about it a lot in gold. A lot of people want gold miners, but a lot of companies that did really well when gold was really doing extremely well were the picks and shovel plays. Companies sure. that weren't necessarily gold miners, but were working with the gold miners. You guys kind of look to me like a picks and shovels play for electric vehicles, which is very unique. You don't have to necessarily be a Tesla to be able to capitalize on the booming electric vehicle space. I, I very much understand that narrative and, and want to be able to support that, which is why we have our, uh, our S to F to C model, because we do play in that space. But I also just want to add that there are times where we do own our own electric vehicle manufacturers. So in this particular case, Trelectric, we are 51% plus owner of, uh, of a commercial electric vehicle manufacturer in Malaysia. Malaysia, great entrance to all of Southeast Asia. Um, a, a young brand supported by the um, by the by the local government and the current king, um, very much in a growth phase. You can see from not only our our social media but mostly theirs. They've got a great selling program for many of their vehicles. We are very excited to um, add those tree electric. Um, um, e-bikes and mopeds and scooters into our homologation process as we br bring those into North America and look to capture sales at a large fleet level. So I don't know, you know, there in Vancouver, if you have particular um, ride sharing programs here in in uh, in New York, we have something called Rebel, and Rebel is a uh, a ride sharing um, electric moped. Um, they're all over the city and much like wow. a much like a, a car to go. You can just go up with your phone, tap, and you have the app. Off you go. Those types of fleets, whether it's Grubhub, whether it's Grab, whether it is a, 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 an Uber Eats, if you will, those types of commercial um, organizations that need to purchase electric e-bikes, electric mopeds, municipalities who are looking for police and 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 other um, users of small lightweight um, um, electric bikes. These are great, these are great customers for us. So we're fulfilling orders um, in Southeast Asia and we're looking forward to fulfilling orders here in, in the United States. So as it pertains here to your, your, your picks and shovels, absolutely, we have our S to F to C model where we sit in between and we enable that commercial uh, vehicle. And more importantly, we at the right times, we have our own manufacturing facilities to be able to get product to a market that we're not seeing. Wow, so you guys are got your hands in everything. 
That's impressive. Well, I mean, as it pertains to commercial electrification and electric vehicles, yes. And we haven't even talked about the charging partners yet. You wow. know, when you you one of your previous questions, whether it's Workhorse or Plug, or you know, in our case in in China, some of our great partners, right? Um, China China Petro. Um, we you know we've got a great great partnership with or Three Gorges. These are major um, energy players that are looking to get this energy sold into a commercial space on a regular basis, and that's where another the revenue streams comes into play for us. Wow. Well, we're really, really excited to see the story unfold. Congratulations on your success so far. I didn't even get to talk about those battery swapping programs that are going to, that we're going to see the electric vehicle ecosystem start to take on and where we fit into that, but we'll leave that for next time. Yeah. And we'd love to have you back on our show. So anytime there's any big news or anything pertinent to investors, we'd love to be able to invite you back and be able to have this as a platform where we can talk about ideanomics and really enhance the visibility for the company by getting more investors to learn more about the basics of what you guys are doing and be able to break down some of the different things that we talked about today, like your financials and what's coming in the future. So thank you so much, Tony, for joining us, the Senior Vice President of Investor Relations for Ideanomics. Have yourself a great day, everybody. Tony, have yourself a great day and we look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. Have a great day. Thank you for watching, guys. Have yourselves a great day. This is Rich from Rich to Be Live with Tony Sklar, the Senior Vice President of Investor Relations for Ideanomics. Have a nice day, everybody.